You said that. Did, do we actually have a commercial break? No, we're gonna cut this all this this, this stuff in. Okay, so okay. I'm gonna start again. So should be a commercial break. <laughs> relax, sit back. Relax, sit back. Relax, sit back. Relax, sit back with me. Relax, sit back. Relax, sit back. Relax, sit back. Relax, sit back with me. Relax, sit back, relax, sit back, relax, sit back, relax, sit back with me, yeah. Now that you've dropped the name, but you're still, you know, you're living a alcohol, drug life free and everything. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people don't know the origins of Straight Edge. Yeah, yeah. Do you happen to know what? Uh, yeah, so it began in the 80s in the Washington, D.C. hardcore scene. So oh. Ian Mackay, famously of, you know, Fugazi, Minor Threat, Teen Idols. Yep. So when Teen Idols were, uh, were active, uh, of course, they were still in high school. And a lot of times, you know, they would play, uh, play in bars and uh, every now and then over 21 shows, uh, 21 being the legal drinking age in the States. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, a lot of their friends wanted to come watch them play. And of course, they were all in high school, too, or, you know, still underage. So um, in order to indicate that you couldn't drink, they put huge X's on your hand. Yeah, I heard that, like... Um in, in the scene, a lot of bands that used to play with, uh, like, Minor Threat, mm -hmm. they didn't really <clears throat> want to play with them because, you know, even at that point, it just got so big and the, mm -hmm. the crews got, uh, like, the straight-edge crews just got out of control. Yeah, and it's weird what people find pride in. You know? So I got introduced to uh, straight-edge in high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, before that, of course, you know, from TV and movies and kids around you, they're always like, oh, we want to go get drunk, let's mm -hmm. go drink and I was part of that too and then uh, in high school I met a kid who was straight edge and he just told me he's like yeah I don't drink I was like why you know because of church or stuff he's like nah and th that was the only time I had heard about people not drinking was because of religious reasons or things mm -hmm. like that and that was something I couldn't really get on board with mm -hmm. but then this kid was just like yeah just yeah don't drink yeah and this kid was at, in high school he was just kind of nuts anyway so I was like <laughs> You, you, wait, you don't need to do this to, you know, you don't need to get drunk or anything just to be weird or anything like that? He's like, nah. That's just his <laughs> default state. Yeah, yeah. And, and to his credit, he's still like that. That's awesome. <laughs> but he still, he, he does drink now. But Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I think when I was 17, I believe, uh, that's when I started using the, uh, that's when I started going drug free. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd gotten drunk a couple times and I was just like, eh. Yeah, I don't see the big deal. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in college, that's when I started calling myself Edge. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, at the time, uh, so I'm from Richmond, by the way. Uh, so, uh, and Richmond has a big punk hardcore scene out there. And Straight Edge was a big thing. It, I'm pretty sure it's still, it, yeah, I think it, it, might, still is, it might still yeah. be a big thing. I don't know. Um, and so I was just moving in, I was moving into the city for the first time. And I really enjoyed... Uh, you know the hardcore scene, the punk scene, and I was already I was already drug free, so I was like, oh, might as well make a full commitment. And at that time, Straight Edge actually, Straight Edge actually had a really terrible rap. Okay. Terrible, terrible rap because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of crews were going around, just you know, like bands were getting beaten up, like stabbings and wow. Yeah, like lots. I mean, some of it might be urban legend, but yeah. a, a lot of it is legit too. But so I wanted to be like. All right, I'll go straight edge and try to give it a good name. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be a dick to be straight edge. Yeah. Pretty sure this one's true. I don't okay. know who it is. So there was this crew in Richmond called Hate O Four. Okay. Uh, so Bad play news. play on Eight O Four. That's the area, the telephone area code mm -hmm. of Richmond. Eight O Four. So they called themselves Hate O Four. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the guys uh, in Hate O Four, he got arrested because he went to uh, this fraternity party. And they were serving, uh, they were serving drinks to underage girls and underage people, mm -hmm. and he just starts stabbing people. Fuck! Wow. That was like in the late '90s, and uh, but uh, this one, I really wish it was true. I'm pretty sure it's not. Okay. But uh, so uh, down to nothing. They're in Gorilla Crew. Mm -hmm. You basically the successor to Hate 04. 
and yeah, they were they were huge. Okay. And you know, like legitimately tough guys. A lot of them went to jail, mm-hmm. and they ran the hardcore scene. Like they, all right. So they got on. They actually got on stage. You guys know uh, Poison the Well. Yeah. Remember that oh, band? Yeah. 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 They beat up Poison the Well. <laughs> on stage. <laughs> on stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the urban legend, though. No, that happened. Oh, that <laughs> happened? <laughs> that actually oh, happened. Oh. Here's the urban legend. So, Gorilla Crew, uh, supposedly, they used to pick on uh, a bunch of Asian kids at, uh, at the university in Richmond. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, VCU, my, my alma mater, uh, yeah. where I went to. And uh, so, apparently, uh, these Asian kids, they got together... <laughs> And dressed as ninjas and tried to jump them. That's such a lie. <laughs> That's such a lie. I was playing in this pop punk band uh, while I was in, in college. Uh, we were asked to play a house show. People legitimately do that in America. You've seen them in music videos and whatever. Yeah, yeah bands play in living rooms or in garages and basements. I've done it a bunch mm-hmm. of times. It's fun. It's, it's awesome. It's, it sounds in, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's a party and, you know, people, are, your friends are there mm-hmm. and, you know, there's drinks and yep. everyone's having a good time. Anyway, we got asked to play a house show, so we pack our stuff, we're driving, and we get a call from my friend. Uh, he calls us up, he says, hey, uh, the show's canceled because uh, the power's out. And we said, oh, fuck, okay, well, all right, I get, well, that sucks. And he says, well, come over anyway, we're all hanging out. All right, cool, let's go. Uh, five minutes passes by, we get another call. Hey, what's up? Uh, the power's back on, so I guess the house show's on, but I'm like, all right, cool, yeah, yeah. Uh, I say, I guess the show's back on because um, there's a bunch of cops like a block away from us. Like, oh, oh okay, well, well, let's see what's about. You get there, and you know, uh, we're just like, hey, what's going on? What's happening? And everyone's like, I don't know, I don't know. And uh, someone comes back in uh, to the house and says, hey, yeah, a block away, a helicopter crashed and took out a power line. So that's why all the power went out, and that's why there was all these cops there. Just there's a fucking helicopter <laughs> down the road from us. And you're us. playing a fucking house show. Yeah, and so we're like, well, what do we do? And we start talking. And we're like, all right, let's play a quick twenty minute set <laughs> while the cops <laughs> are busy. <laughs> while the cops are busy, you know, so that you know they're too busy dealing with this. They're not gonna bother us. So we, yeah, we set up, we play, and we have fun at the party while there's a bunch of cops down the road. <laughs> I mean, remember we were talking about like how there's always a wave of genres that mm-hmm. like this, from here this year this year it's this from this year and we're obviously uh, experiencing that every year mm-hmm. and then you told me that the next thing is going to be it's going to be a revival of metalcore. I think so. Yeah. I I well, what was popular with uh, say so in you know late the mid to late nineties that's when metalcore was starting to come about. You had bands like botch and mm. coalesce come you know kind of just being really progressive with it you know and so i would really like to see that because that's what i grew up with uh you know uh like converge mm-hmm. and uh bands like that made a big way and uh one band that comes to mind in japan um this band called the maybe you've worked with them uh i think visions of fatima or maybe you've heard of them Visions of Fatima, yeah, there's a band, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they remind me of the stuff I listened to. I remember, yeah, you were, uh, when we watched them, I think it was Osaka or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I was like, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I'm so far, I'm getting kind of proved wrong, but then again, we still have five years left in this decade. Yeah. Like, I think, you know, everything's kind of, you know, uh, defined within decades, you know? Mm-hmm. So everyone's like, oh, the 90s did this, the yeah. 80s did that. So, you know, the 2010s, uh, well, going back, so as far as waves go, when when we say the waves, usually you see it. It there's a lot of nostalgia associated with uh, things that happened about roughly 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So, and that goes back to like the 70s. In the 70s, uh, the 50s were a big thing. That because mm-hmm. that's when Happy Days came out. That's when Grease came out. So there was a big nostalgia that's wave true. for that. Then the 80s uh, kind of had a 60s thing going mm-hmm. on. Um, and the nineties definitely had a seventies thing. There was, you you could hear it in like, uh, uh, so like in the pop, in the pop music, this is what I associate with. So in pop music, there was a lot of disco kind of vibes to it Mm -hmm. in the two thousands. I remember this because this was me growing up. There was a big eighties infatuation. Yeah. So we were definitely infatuated with that, the fashion and, you know, like, uh, bright colors and stuff like that. And we definitely see it now in 2010s. Everyone's 
all about the 90s. 90s yeah. Yeah. So, like, you see a lot of people wearing, like, Public Enemy shirts and mm-hmm. 90s hip-hop stuff. I see a lot of Michael Jordan shirts and <laughs> stuff like that. That's and, true. Yeah, and, you know, like, the big grunge revival, mm-hmm. for one, like, with a lot of bands that's going about now. Uh, some With the Screamo revival, too, like, Touche Amore and Pianos Become the Teeth. They're They're doing that, too, and it's starting to come back in... Japan as well. Say hello to sunshine. They're kind mm-hmm. of doing that as well. Yeah, I think it's a very, uh, it's it hits home for a lot of people. You know. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah. So I think it. what I think it is is that people tend to be uh, really fascinated with the generation before them, before mm-hmm. they were born, or when they were too young to really comprehend it. Yeah. So yeah, like I really enjoyed eighty stuff when I was in high school because like I didn't experience that. I experienced the nineties. Yeah. This is what I lived through. And now I'm kind of going through that again, <laughs> just with yeah. like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. But now I'm I'm not cool enough to say, you know, like, hey, I actually experienced that. And just like, <laughs> get out of here, old man. <laughs> no, but what you can say is, mm-hmm. hey, when I was younger, people used to wear T-shirts that were like super tight with like studded belts. <laughs> that was our generation. That you was, know? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dude. That was that was like all the bands that mm-hmm. were that we like taking back Sunday, you yeah. know, like remember that? Like, dude, actually, I watched a video not too long ago. I think it was like, oh, it was Under Oath. Oh, dude, <laughs> dude, yeah, 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 dude. I watched a really old Under Oath video, and I was like, oh my god, there, there have actually been some significant changes. Like, like the jeans weren't as tight as I remember them to be. Oh yeah, like yeah, they were still like kind of almost bell bottomy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, relatively speaking, you know. Yeah. So they were pretty loose and kind of saggy as well. I mean, the t-shirts were super tight, mm. that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> and actually, I think that's kind of, it's kind of the inverse of what's happening. A lot of kids at punk shows and hardcore shows, they wear giant, giant t-shirts yeah. now, but their pants are super tight. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, 10 years ago, it was, it was the opposite. Shirts were, like, like... All right, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I, I, what is this? Revival guy, you. You're so, I'm not saying I'm part of the revival. I'm saying I'm observing it, dude. <laughs> With your tight. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's not that you're just small. It's not that you're just big. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's big, yeah. And there's that. Mm-hmm. Okay, but yeah, and so I mean that's what I've yeah. I've noticed about it. Is it? This is this is it. This is it. Cut the inside. Cut the inside. Cut the 大丈夫。そのまま入るんだけどね。いやいや、全部これは無理でしょ。You <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>